Welcome to All Growth Podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Alvaro Gamboa. Thank you again for tuning in with us, being here with us in this space and time. This week's episode, number seven, All Masculine. We're playing into the patriarch. Last week, we talked about energy. This week, I want us to explore masculine energy. We're going to go ahead and discuss what that looks like, what that doesn't look like, <laughs> what masculine energy, how it exudes itself, how it's portrayed in society, and how we need to change our relationship with masculine energy. This is All Growth. We're talking about masculine energy, everybody. We're talking about every form of masculine energy and how it looks. Time for us to plant some seeds. Some seeds that I want for us to plant for our relationship with masculine energy is I want us to go ahead and define masculine energy. So we're going to define what masculine energy is. And we're also going to define what it looks like. I went ahead and jotted down some characteristics and qualities of masculine energy. I'll read them for you now. Masculine energy is focused, goal-oriented, stable, strong, structured, logical, driven, and expressed through the physical realm. Masculine energy is an active energy. That's a very big, important quality characteristic for masculine energy. It's an active quality. The masculine energy, it's stable, it's predictable, it's always logical, it's based on, it's based on facts, it's based on things that that we could see, we know there's strengths with masculine energy that include willpower, clarity, focus, ambition, drive. The masculine energy looks to create structures, foundations, rules, laws, outlines, so it knows how to apply the logic that they have. With these characteristics and quality, I want us to understand the masculine energy is this statistical, this data-driven form of energy where uh, we're more focused on facts and truth, and there is no room, little room for any dressing of opinion or any ideas it's all just fact based i want for us to do is another way we can start to look at masculine energy is knowledge data statistics stats knowledge as opposed to feminine energy it's more knowing masculine energy is knowledge whether it be literature whether it be math numbers feminine energy is more so knowing or in the space of knowing that there is you know so like knowledge is like structured it's very literal it doesn't change it's predictable it's stable you can rely on these you can build a solid structure and a foundation on the feminine energy is more knowing and it's very elusive it's forever changing and malleable for masculine energy it's not a level of knowledge to be achieved because once you get there like, it's opening new possibilities and inspires you to go further so with these seeds that we're planting we're looking at masculine energy as is very goal oriented as is very structured as is very rigid regimented energy if i'm saying these characteristics and certain people come to mind then these are people that have this masculine energy the final seed that i want us to plant is that while we are speaking about masculine energy today and we'll be speaking about feminine energy later i want us to get the idea of separate of energies as opposed to genders and sexes and, and these gender roles so while i am talking about a masculine energy i might be addressing a feminine energy i'm not talking about men and women because as in life it's all a balance you can have feminine energy you can have masculine energy in you as a matter of fact, you do. With these energies, it's very important to have a proper balance of, right? A lot of the times we focus on one set of energy without a proper balance for the other side. While I'm addressing feminine energy and I'm addressing masculine energy, I just want us to look at these characteristics as different energies, as different, separate from the person, from the physical. It doesn't matter what party body parts you have. I'm talking about energy that could be in all of them. These are all the seeds that I want us to think about and take with this and grow along with our discussion. Right now, I think it's important for us to have on over to the growth garden what's going on everyone i think now is the perfect time to take a breather relax on wine and take a visit on over to the growth garden in the garden today with us i'd like to give a shout out to today's episode sponsor posh faces and because we sponsored and partnered with them you can head on over to their website poshfaces.com and use our promo code growth g-r-o-w-t-h for 10 percent discount on your entire purchase now with posh faces they offer the best and beard grooming kits with the posh faces blueprint beard kit that's going to come with your choice of either two oils the cedarwood and sandalwood beard oil or the lavender and sage beard oil along with that the blueprint beard kit is going to come with some clippers so you can go ahead and clip trim finesse shorten and get your beard all nice and hand for those out of control beards for those beards that have needed a little tlc the blueprint beard kit is something that i definitely recommend now when i 
see the world, I feel like the world sees you. So I'm a huge advocate for grooming, for self-care, for making sure you're presenting your best self. Because why in the, why in the world would the world not want to see your best self? Special shout out to Posh Faces for sponsoring today's episode. Head on over to poshfaces.com and use our promo code GROWTH to get a 10% off. Thank you, Posh Faces. Today's discussion is all catered and centered around masculine energy. And I want us to go ahead and add some things that we need to grow. It's time for us to get some water and light on masculine energy. What I want us to look at is masculine energy and its role in society. Masculine energy is dictated by the doer, people that do, ambitious people that are driven, that have these goals in mind, accomplishments are sought after. Accolades, these are the kind of people that get by in the matter of fact that they succeed in the world. Someone that's very in tune with masculine energy is focused on shit that has to get done. Bottom line, we got things to do. There's no other way for you to feel about it. I'm not addressing that now. We got to get this done. We got a deadline. It's on the agenda. This is our top of the priority list. These are all masculine energy characteristics. You can start to notice once we get into the working class and the real world and, and capitalism, you can see how masculine energy plays a role in our society. As a matter of fact, masculine energy runs our entire society. Society supports masculine energy and it's supported in our culture in all times. Someone that's very masculine, has a masculine energy about them, can go ahead and get things done, recruit others, delegate work, and is very focused on the work. Very successful, highly accomplished people. As a matter of fact, this energy can make you feel accomplished and it, it thrives on these accolades and this accomplishment and the fact that yo we got shit done we're getting shit done but we need to get shit done this is where masculine energy comes about with masculine energy i do want us to address masculinity it is important for us in this conversation since i feel like masculinity has been mistaken for masculine energy now you can have a masculine energy within you whether or not you're a woman or man and i think it's important for us to discuss it because the like they talk about masculinity especially as a reason days has been quite a hot topic issue and i think it's important for us to address masculine energy and masculinity at the same time so that way we can understand better how to cure society with these wrong treatments of masculinity or wrong assessments of masculinity what i want for us to get to into right now is this hierarchy of masculinity now i stumbled upon it and was amazed and mind blown what i'm going to be talking about right now is connell's hierarchy of masculinity masculinity hierarchy broken down by R.W. Connell, Australian trans woman whose model of masculinity was written in her book, Masculinities 1995, way back, we're talking 25 years back, and it breaks down the and gives a proper explanation to masculinity in a hierarchy, which is now since then considered canon and it's a classical, universally accepted way for us to look at masculinity, for society to look at masculinity. If people that study masculinity, masculinity studies, men's studies, they use these hierarchies hierarchies of masculinity. So I figure it's important for us to break it down to the common person so that way we can understand our masculine energy now as well. Connell's structure, hierarchy of masculinity is very much a pyramid. Uh, one would even say that masculinity is a pyramid scheme. I feel the same because at the top of the pyramid, the first point is going to be hegemonic masculinity. Now that's a very big word, hegemonic masculinity. Long for no reason. What it means essentially is a straight white man's world. Very off the top, as simple as I could break. Hegemonic masculinity is the masculinity that runs the United States and I would argue the world. It's this idea of straight white men at the very top of this ladder, at the very top of this pyramid. Then comes the top middle of this pyramid and that's called complicit masculinity. Now with complicit masculinity, these characteristics of masculinity mean that they might not fit into a straight white man's world. They aren't considered at the top of the top, that creme de la creme, but they're not challenging hegemonic masculinity. So therefore it's still beneficial, therefore they still get a pass and they're accepted. They might not be the top of the totem pole, but they're up there in the top. Let's take a one step further into the third rank of this hierarchy of masculinity the bottom third is going to be marginalized masculinity marginalized masculinity is masculinities that may not fit into hegemonic masculinity that straight white man's world may not pass for that straight white man's view of masculinity however although they don't have these certain characteristics that doesn't mean that they won't subscribe to stereotypical norms of hegemonic masculinity so that bottom mid-level is marginalized masculinity masculinity that's on the borders that kind of still sometimes maybe prescribes to certain stereotypical norms promoted by hegemonic masculinity and complicit masculinity. Who's in this tier you might say? I would say that men of color and disabled men are in this or this in that bottom level, bottom mid level with the fact that they are still men, right? So they still subscribe to some ideas about manhood, about masculinity and masculine energy. However, they're not fully accepted because of the color of their skin or the fact that they're not physically able. They might not even own land. I, I 
want to step back really quick. If I were to characterize the people that are in the top mid category of complicit masculinity, I would say these are, might be white passing white men. They might not own land or be in a position of power or might have their own personal business or a, a business of their own, but yet they're still complicit and they don't challenge hegemonic masculinity. So they're in, they're in the club, but we're not. The bottom mid level is reserved for the black and brown men of color and disabled men, the people that do not have means or do not have any power, any own any land. Their voice is relatively often not heard, not cared for, and so they're neglected. Now the bottom of the pyramid, the very bottom of the pyramid is what I would say shows qualities that aren't valued in hegemonic masculinity. Feminine men, effeminate men, people that are in tune with their feminine energy, whether they be expressive with their emotions or they might not have like the, the, the strength, the physical strength and power and the self-control respected and, and honored in masculinity. These men include like feminine men, gay men, people in tune with their emotions that are expressive, the physically weak, the disabled as well. So that's Connell's hierarchy of masculinity and masculine energy. I want us to take the hierarchy of masculinity and use it to explain masculine energy. So in all of those, at the very top are the doers, doers that get shit done. This hegemonic masculinity is the straight white man's world that gets shit done. Most times people get shit done for them with complicit masculinity. With the bottom mid, we have marginalized masculinity. Now these are still men. These might not be what the straight white man's world would like for us to consider men. They're still doers. They might still be able to have ambition, drive, passion to be able to get things done as well. Although this masculinity is physically enabling in terms of like a, a very ableistic where if you're physically disabled or you're weak or you're not strong, you're at the bottom of the totem pole. While you might not be able to physically provide, you can still provide in many other ways. That's the gist of it in terms of this hierarchy of masculinity that I wanted us to explain. Some more insight that I wanted us to provide and look into is the portrayals of positive masculinity, what positive masculinity looks like. I've been mentioning before, it's ambitious, but not too egotistical. It's it's ambitious, but not to a fault. Uh, it has a healthy balance to it. I, when, when you have a positive masculinity, you're productive, but you're not boastful. There's a humility and a modesty to you as opposed to a very braggadocious and ego-driven boastfulness. You have integrity. Masculine energy very much so has integrity where we say word is bond. That's that's exactly what it is. It's a bondage. We stand by what we say we're going to do. It has to get done or this is how we feel and we stand on that. And then masculine energy has integrity within itself. Positive examples of masculine energy I want us to look at, you're trustworthy. Or you're trusted to protect and provide. Now with masculine energy, it's it very much so this protectoral and providal energy. So with positive masculinity, it very much is this energy about providing and protecting whether that be community, your family, it very much has this protector, provider energy. Because you're trusted, because you exude this energy, you are a protector, you are a provider. Positive masculine energy, I want us to look at the examples in our lives where we have seen positive examples of manhood, of masculine energy. We're gonna go ahead, take a journey into the next. So that's the water and light that I wanted to, for us to look into, provide so that we can start growing these seeds of masculine energy. Now with our journey, in every journey, we come across some problems. Here at All Growth, we like to call those the weeds because in every journey sometimes you get in the weeds every garden has weeds things that are there that weren't supposed to grow there they're there now we're in the weeds we're stressed we're bombarded with a lot of chaos in the world and so we have to address those right it's time it's time to pull out some weeds uh, one of the weeds that i want for us to look into and pull out and get rid of is negative masculine energy negative masculine energy is very selfish it is uh, active like positive masculine energy masculine energy is active but it's careless with its action. It has no consideration for others and how their actions might affect others at all. There's very much an irrational and impulsiveness with this ne negative masculine energy. There's selfishness and there's selfless, uh, selfish goals. When you have negative masculine energy, you do not care about anything and anyone outside of getting this goal accomplished, making shit happen. So you can get very much so a hyper tunnel vision. There is a hyper tunnel vision in negative masculine energy because what you're saying is we have a, a mission to accomplish and we're gonna get this shit done with or without anybody else. I'm a damn self with a one man army without a care consideration for anyone else. It's very impulsive, very irrational. Now with this negative masculine energy and other ways that it manifests is micromanaging, being on top of everything and everyone. If your bosses micromanage you, I've had bosses that micromanage and I don't fuck with that at all. That's very much so negative masculine energy and there's no proper balance. These are people that have busy bodies that are doing a million things with no regard for maintenance of themselves. That's another characteristic. It's rampant in our society where we self-sacrifice. So negative masculine energy because we're so 
goal oriented. We're so driven to get this shit done. We don't focus on the other things that are just as important too, just as urgent and just as necessary. But because we're in hyper tunnel vision, we can't see it for ourselves, obviously, because we're in the thick of it. Some things include like cleaning and cleansing and just maintenance, like the general lack of upkeep, negative masculine energy. Someone that has a lot of negative masculine energy, they don't, they aren't good cleaners. They aren't good keepers of space, right? Of themselves as well. They might tend to let themselves go in the pursuit of this mission and the being so focused on this goal and getting it done. They might let themselves go and let everything around them that they've built up with their way and just be, and just be neglectful of everything outside of what's got to get done. So that's very much negative masculine energy. And if anything comes up that I'm talking about and I'm addressing and it comes up for you or you're noticing someone, understand that it's all within us as well. We just It's all about focusing on the curing and balancing of these energies, making sure that there's no guilt, shame, or, or any negative energy put into this negative masculine energy and, de- and address it with compassion and awareness so we can start to balance and heal ourselves without the added emotional damage that's done when you try to shame and build someone into addressing their negative masculine energy. Or or just addressing it with yourself. It's definitely something that I've learned in my conversations with friends where they thankfully hold me accountable to my negative masculine energy. And I'm able to then hold them accountable to their masculine energy and we can all heal each other, start healing ourselves as well. I'm thankful that I get to address my negative masculine energy whenever it comes up in a more positive, more compassionate manner. Because back then, Lord, I was beating myself up, man. And that's not something that I want for you as well. So keep that in mind when addressing negative masculine energy. The biggest weed that comes about when addressing masculine energy is patriarchy patriarchal society that we live in as a matter of fact the biggest weed i think that we come across is that we're all playing into the patriarchy we're all playing into the game of patriarchy and that's what it is essentially now playing into the patriarchy is making us believe we can only provide in very strict structured regimented defined way what we can protect and provide for ourselves and, and our families and only these means which usually is providing financially playing into the patriarchy that's saying that the men have to provide money for relationships and the women are victims of that because that means women are relegated to doing the housework and taking care of the family while men are off at work men are the victims too of patriarchy because there are so many times so many people so many stories of people going to work at jobs they hate for a check for their family i'm only at this job for the family i'm only at this job for my wife and kids and my partner and my, my my family that's not that's not the way fam you got to understand everyone's a victim in patriarchy patriarchy is exploitative it's abusive at heart it's toxic so it's core and when we play into this fallacy of patriarchy we're taking time away from our families we're disrupting the cycle of nature like things that are come natural to us we're disrupting that entirely commuting to work to give our best times our best years our best moments in life to a paycheck for work that we don't like and isn't filling these are all playing into the patriarchy and these are all damaging to the individual the collective and society as a whole it's not something that should be endorsed and promoted and that's something that comes across in every in the walk of life in every American right this idea like I have to be this provider and this protector I've had conversations with friends that say I'm not making as much money as I want to for a wife and and my kids or my future family or the family that I have now and it's important to understand that that's playing into the patriarchy playing into the patriarchy saying uh, you gotta make X amount of dollars for these kids this is the only way you can provide when that's not the truth of the matter the truth of the matter is that you can provide your family by physically being there you can provide for your family by providing a safe space protecting them in the safe space that allows for them to thrive allows for you to thrive and be there be everyone's best authentic self this is something that's important for us to understand because if we don't become aware of how we play into the patriarchy we'll continue to repeat these cycles and that's important to understand because patriarchy is at its core destructive it's destructive to people masculine energy that's been distorted and it's not something that i want every, anyone to hold as the truth of the matter this is why we pour water and light into things so we can become aware of some more weeds that we come across i feel would be a disconnect with masculine energy so this masculine energy this connection leads to inaction slothish not able to do things not wanting to do things being demotivated having a low morale not ambitious very much so stagnant energy stagnation occurs where you have this resentment that you're not doing things and then bitterness comes these are all disconnects with masculine energy and then connections with negative masculine energy as well things like shame insecurity guilt fear these are all things that come about when you disconnect the mind from the heart you disconnect your soul from your body because when these disconnections occur it allows for all this and these disconnections create voids within us and we don't know how to fill them but you have this imbalance so i'm saying this so that everyone can become aware of the imbalances that you 
you have the disconnects that are taking place that way we can connect again and create a balance for ourselves and be in alignment with one another and with every energy in it within us and be in alignment with our masculine energy so like i mentioned earlier one of the biggest weeds is hegemonic masculinity with masculine energy and hegemonic masculinity is a straight white man's world straight white men have run the world for far too long right it's his story for a reason saying that you have to understand that hegemonic masculinity is destructive it's incumbent upon getting others to do work for them and being at the top of the totem pole delegating everything and still reaping the most benefits getting the biggest slice of the pie this is all very destructive and you see it in our everyday lives whether it be the top of a business which would be the ceo or the board you have to look at these people and how they think they're very much so concerned about profit as little as they are concerned about people they care more about the money in the bank as opposed to they care about their workers right they're concerned more about profits than they are people flat out and that's destructive because that means that they'll cut corners they'll point shape wherever they need to in order to get the most bang out of their buck that's not the world that i want to live in anymore because you see i see for myself how that's destructive in everyone's view the straight white man's view of the world has created eurocentricity that we talked about in this podcast before i'm not a fan of nor do i subscribe to eurocentricity this idea of anything white is right and everything not is not <laughs> i don't want to promote hegemonic masculinity i don't want you guys i don't want anyone else to think that um, the world is catered to white men it was it really was but that's not the world that we live in and now that's not the world that i'm creating for the future and myself some more weeds that come about include hyper masculinity hyper masculine energy and <laughs> the latin culture that comes about as machismo and bravado these are very much so hyper masculine portrayals hyper masculine energy i want to say like an exaggeration of what manhood and masculinity has been deemed to be it's very much so over exaggeration over accumulation of stereotypical masculine behavior like cartoonish caricature i would say of what a masculine energy should look like good example of hyper masculinity is someone being competitive for no reason classic example i feel like hyper masculinity is michael jordan michael jordan was a gambling addict all right <laughs> can we Okay, can we just put that out there? He was addicted to gambling, com competing. And that's very much so hyper-masculine, where you're addicted to competition, thrive off that me versus them, me versus you mentality, that us versus them mentality is very much so hyper-masculine. Because you gotta, you gotta understand, the table's big enough for everybody. The universe provides for all your wants and needs. You gotta put it out there. There's no reason to compete against any others. There's no lack of, there's no lack, there's no scarcity. Everything literally could be provided for. There should be no competition. We're all one, we're all on this earth connected together for a reason one of the weeds that's affecting masculine energy the last weed we have to discuss has been mainstream for the past couple of years for sure the past year i feel like 2010s has been the decade of toxic masculinity <laughs> and that's the weed that we're going to be talking about man toxic masculinity for sure for sure is rampant in today's world and that's from hegemonic masculinity the straight white man's world distortions of hyper masculinity We've gotten so imbalanced with this world that we have toxic masculinity for those very few that might not know about toxic masculinity some characteristics of toxic masculinity include destruction being destructive being violent being ignorant selfish careless harmful abrasive these are all toxic masculinity characteristics toxic masculinity has been rampant i implore every man to address toxic masculinity wherever and whenever they see it i've had to address toxic masculinity within myself and whenever i come across it and it's important since you have to understand we're in the society already and we've been brainwashed by these ideas ideas of of what manhood should look like what ma being a masculine man looks like whether that be violent with your loved ones whether that be being someone that consumes a bunch of meat other examples of being just abrasive towards others right for the classic the classic joke of like oh i hate my wife this toxic masculinity is very much so damaging to ourselves at our core and our collective in addressing toxic masculinity it is a hard conversation to have i've had to have very hard conversations with myself and addressing my toxic masculinity first and foremost because if i didn't address how i was be harming others i wouldn't have understood how to heal others as well it's a hard conversation to have we have to hold yourself accountable and like damn i did that these are the conversations that you need to be have because one thing i do definitely prescribe to is that you have complete control over our intentions we have no control over our impact we might have the most purest of intentions however we have no control over how our intentions impact others how our actions have impacted others and the universal law is do no harm and if you've done harm then you must atone for that harm and toxic masculinity as a whole and 
this community. You have to understand toxic masculinity has been hurting people for far, far too long. So in addressing toxic masculinity, we're healing ourselves, we're healing our peoples, we're addressing these issues and problems. I want to say that toxic masculinity runs in any group of men. Where two or three are gathered, it's there, okay? <laughs> like with toxic masculinity, it's effective to our core. We have to understand we're just as much of a victim of it because it's programming, it's marketing, brainwashing, it's things that have gotten us to believe and prescribed drive to these ideals and we've learned this it's been learned in our classrooms at home on our tv screens these are things that have been learned so it's very important to unlearn examples of poor masculinity whether that be negative masculinity whether that be hegemonic masculinity hyper masculinity and toxic masculinity especially unlearn these habits these characteristics these qualities these traits these behaviors so that we can relearn positive masculinity so we can become positive examples of masculine energy so that we may ourselves can have a great a proper and aligned balance with our masculine and our feminine energies that about wraps up this week's episode everyone thank you for sticking around in this space and time with us i'm so happy to have discussed masculine energy it's something that my spirit has been calling me to talk about for some time in the harvest of it all i want us to collect some insights before we leave what have we learned today simply put there are healthy examples and ways to express masculine energy healthy ways to recreate have these energetic outlets for masculine energy while looking for masculine energy and, and being aware of when this masculine energy becomes hyper or toxic as well. Another thing that we have learned is Connell's hierarchy of masculinity, the old way of looking at masculinity with the straight white man being on top, everyone else at the bottom. We could ditch that, we could let that go, we could reverse that and redefine who, what positive masculine energy. Some things that I hope that you take with you are knowing our masculine energy is where action takes place. Knowing that masculine energy is what drives you and motivates you. Becoming aware that masculine energy is the action and is the initiative of all allows us to channel it and it creates for greater people much more action being done, much more positive action being uh, taking place. Being aware of our masculine energy at all times allows us for us to channel it, make sure that we can self-regulate and balance ourselves and heal ourselves without damaging ourselves and damaging others. What have we gained in our discussion of masculine energy? Uh, we gained an understanding and an understanding of masculine energy as it relates to us and our friendships and our relationships. We've also gained healthy ways to express our masculine energy and what creative outlets we can do for that. So you have to understand a healthy outlet for masculine energy is doing, actual doing, like hands-on experience, where the result is the reward itself. Things like carpentry, building and <laughs> buying and building an Ikea desk, which I had to do. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, nothing is greater than seeing what you've done. It comes a great sense of pride of knowing that I built that, I made that. The accomplishment is something that you can see. So the, making the result, the reward is a, a beautiful and the best outlet for that masculine energy. How have we grown here at All Girl today talking about masculine energy? Simple, man. We started to understand our masculine energy. We can create a firm balance of our energy within ourselves and be in alignment. The last thing we've learned, the last manner in which we've grown is understanding how our masculine energy has led us astray or has bamboozled us or how we've been mansplained <laughs> how to believe about masculine energy. We've been led down the wrong path. So the fact that we've discussed today, I hope that has led you on the right path and you can continue on your journey to growth and the best, most aligned, balanced, masculine energy. That about wraps it up for us here, folks. Thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to us. Hopefully, a lot of good things came up for you. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Shit, we can do this every weekend. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, I'm in between time. Keep growing, keep glowing, keep going.